Hey folks, Crazy Climber 80 here again. And this time we're going to look at game number 16 in our 20 from 1985 series. And this game was one of those rarities where it was originally not an arcade game, but it ended up getting an arcade port. And this is the classic Pitfall 2. And this was created uh, initially by Activision and David Crane for the Atari 2600. And there have been other ports to uh, home consoles, but... This uh, this is the arcade version released in 1985, and uh, it's got the simplest of controls. You uh, move left, right, up, or down, and you use a jump button. And the graphics are souped up considerably from uh, recent uh, uh, or uh, previous Pitfall 2 versions. Uh, in fact, they've added some some features, uh, some uh, new stages. There are four different stages. You start out in the jungle, right there. And uh, there's also ice caves for the uh, second stage. The third stage has mine carts. And the fourth stage has a big old temple. And once you beat all the stages, your game will end. And uh, whenever you collect uh, gold bags, or uh, or gold bars or uh, treasure chests or whatever they change from level to level. Oops. Um, you will restore some time on your timer, and you will get bonus points. Don't run out of time; you will lose a life. And we're gonna go ahead and get started. Uh, I remember seeing this. This has such peppy, great music to it. It's a little little souped up from the uh, home console versions. Uh, I like this game. This is very cool. This is a great, uh, a great version of uh, the Pitfall uh, series. Uh, don't touch anything that's moving. You will get killed. <laughs> Pre pretty much anything. Some things will help you, like the vines or, or whatnot, but most things that are moving will kill you. Now, in the, uh, in the home... Uh, version, the Atari 2600 version at least, of uh, Pitfall 2. Uh, the scorpions were tough to jump over sometimes. Uh, in an area where things fall from the trees, uh, if you wait a while, one of those items, or one of those things will turn into a, a gold bag, and you can collect it for some points and some restored time. Those vines, you might need to wait a little while on before it's safe to jump across. I remember seeing this in, uh, I think, a few a few places, like a couple arcades. Uh, the first place I remember seeing it was at a convenience store when I was visiting my cousin. But uh, you are going to want to collect a lot of these treasure uh, bag, the uh, treasure chests or money bags or whatever. Um, because your time will, will tick down, uh, fairly quickly. And like I said, when it runs out, you are dead. Note that they've, they've added a number of, uh, of cool things, like, uh, volcanoes, there'll be, uh, lightning strikes, just all sorts of different things that they've added from this, added to this from the, uh, Atari 2600 port. Sometimes there will be gators, sometimes there will be logs you have to jump in the uh, water there. Yeah, don't even let a log, a rolling log, touch you or you are dead. But definitely make it a point to uh, collect the treasures, whatever type of treasures they are. <laughs> even, even falling apples will kill you. And yeah, eventually uh, an apple will turn into a uh, money bag. And there's the uh, gators that you have to jump on their their mouths or heads when they're closed. And we're just we're not gonna do a full playthrough, no way. <laughs> we're just gonna look at uh, various parts of each stages of each of the stages. Yeah, only once will that uh, will one of those things turn into a money bag. Let's scoot forward. There are uh, there's the lightning strikes. There are a total of 32 screens 
uh, scrolling from left to right, and you can go to the underground part of, of uh, many of the screens. And yeah, like I said, get those money bags whenever you can see them, or whatever treasures you end up seeing in the game. <laughs> those little uh, killer silkworms, or whatever those are. <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, money bag there that we saw at the end, you have to jump for that one. Whoops! <laughs> That's what it's like when you die. Uh, at some point in the game, I put on invincibility and uh, later on infinite uh, time. The game is kind of forgiving in terms of uh, being able to jump across the logs there. And there's a, a raven. Yeah, don't, don't screw around when that thing is shooting fireballs. Eventually, when you get to an end of an area, there will be a key. And sometimes you need to collect a certain treasure to make that key appear. And these are the ice caves. You have to watch out for those uh, falling stalactites. And sometimes you will have to go across a puddle of ice and it'll be slippery and you can slide right into a uh, uh, stalactite or a bat. Sometimes there's more than one bat on the same screen, which sucks. <laughs> um... But uh, in this area, now we see uh, crystals that act as the treasures. They, all the treasures, I think, are 1,000 points and give you uh, 15... Is it 15? No, 30 seconds of time back. And now here is where you can catch the balloon and fly upwards. Uh, touching, touching it on a bat or touching it on a uh, uh, cave wall or ceiling will pop it. So watch out. And you'll you'll be able to fall as far as you want. Whoops, I missed that crystal. Um, ah, crap. <laughs> Not gonna quite make it to there. You can fall as far as you, as you want without dying. And you can hook left or right to try to uh, get back to a uh, uh, ledge. Otherwise you're gonna fall back in the water and you gotta go back around. Watch out for those uh, electric eels. I'm guessing that's what they are. But you'll be able to find a uh, crystal in the water here. Uh, if you can take the balloon up to this ledge, that is where the key will appear to go to the next area. But you need to collect a uh, treasure, I think. And it's somewhere... Uh, I think it's at the bottom of this... Uh, this uh, uh, long vertical area, and you need to collect the. Uh, oh no, you need to collect the treasure here, and that'll put the key up there. And then you need to take the uh, balloon back up there and collect the key, and then you could go to the next area. We're gonna do that here. Ta da! You get bonus points for all the time that you had left. And now the uh, music changes a little bit. And we're gonna m make our way to the mine carts, but we've got to uh, swim through this uh, water area first. And go over the falls, and there's a couple uh, treasures you can collect on the way. And this time the uh, treasures are gold bars. But like I said, I think they're all uh, 1,000 points each, and they grant you uh, 30 seconds of time back. If you hang around on one screen for too long, then a little creature will appear. I can't tell what the hell it is, or if it's a UFO or what, but it will start to hound you, and if it catches you, it kills you. And to make it go away, you have to leave the screen, left or right. And now we've got frogs, and uh, on this uh, minecart stage, we will have uh, descending uh, rock uh, pillars that can kill you, and we'll see those soon enough. And you can jump into the minecarts. You don't have to take the minecarts. You can just go on foot, but don't run into the minecarts. 
And to, to stop, you can jump on those little uh, pull cord thingies. Don't ride a minecart into that uh, red whatever the hell that is. You, it will crash and you'll die. But obviously I have the uh, invincibility uh, cheat on by this point. You can ride the minecarts through those doors. You can't walk through the doors on foot. And there'll be one place where the uh, minecarts will crisscross and you can crash into one and die. So I uh, don't let that happen. We're just skipping through the various areas. There's those uh, descending pillars that I was talking about. I love the music. I love the way that they souped this game up from the uh, Atari 2600 or, or uh, other uh, home system versions. Yeah, that would have killed me for sure. But if you can get to that crystal ball, then you will uh, make a key appear somewhere in this stage. You have to go back to where the key is, and it's at the bottom left of the of the stage. But yeah, jump out and uh, catch that pull cord to avoid slamming into things. Ooh, like that uh, descending pillar. And there we've beaten uh, stage number three, and we are on the final stage coming up here. It's easy to get lost. The mazes are big. Or the uh, uh, stages are, are pretty big. <laughs> I hate those surprise uh, arrows on some of those uh, floors. I've got the raven again. But uh, this stage has a lot of uh, a lot of false floors or pits that open up. Now we have treasure chests for the uh, treasures, and there's one of those pits that'll open up. You can kind of tell when they when they're about to appear. You'll just see the the look of the floor change, and they won't kill you. They'll drop you through, but that can often drop you into a lava pit or on spikes or something. And just below me there was the uh, the ending of of uh, Pitfall 2. That's where I needed to go, and you have to go a long way around. It's easy to get lost. <laughs> And there's some spikes right there. Obviously, instant death if you touch them. And there's a lot of areas where you have to swing across. And yeah, you could just you could just look at the floor, and you'll be able to tell if a pit is about to open up. Like I said, all it does is just drop you down. Whoops! I want to time your swing a little bit better there. And there's that uh, UFO or whatever the hell thing it is that I was telling you about. Yeah, you can drop through that pit there. It'll just keep hounding you unless you uh, exit the screen left or right. And that's if you uh, run run out of time, or or if you are on a in an area too long. Yeah, those those uh, uh, yeah that pit will drop you right on the spikes. Yeah, those arrows, they're no fair. And here is the last area, and this really sucks. You have to take a balloon and not have it get popped by the fireballs. Or have it popped by any other means. And you have to go to the top right and collect that, uh, collect that crown. Really sucks. Very, very hard to do. Nope. <laughs> nope. <laughs> and the fireballs pour out of that uh, statue. Will I get it this time? And... Oh my god. <laughs> so freaking hard to do. By the way, you can pull down or push up on the joystick to uh, slow down your balloon's ascent or speed it up. And I needed to take the uh, infinite time cheat off here <laughs> to be able to end the game. I hope you all had a happy Halloween. I just stayed at home and watched uh, The Evil Dead and uh, had candy at the ready in case kids came to the door, which they didn't. Had no trick-or-treaters. That's all right. More candy for me. But that is the ending of Pitfall 2, the arcade version created by Sega. And now I'll put in my initials. 
But yeah, the game the game will end. You don't start it over. There was a way on that very first stage at the end to get an extra life icon, which looks like Pitfall Harry, right by that thing that was spitting out fireballs. Not entirely sure how that happens, but we're going to look at each stage, and there is the first stage in four uh, layers there. Uh, it has a total of 32 screens, and it just goes left to right. And there's a, a lower area that you can access to get uh, treasures or money bags or whatever on occasion and restore some time. There's a second stage, the uh, ice caves, and the ice caves are on the far right side. Just keep going down, and then the middle side, or the middle area, is where the balloon rises up. And then the far left side is where you got to go all the way up to uh, uh, collect the uh, key. And then this third area is the minecart area. This has like uh, 41 screens, I think. And you start at the top right, and uh, you swim your way to the le the top left. And then you can take the minecarts down, and at the center is where the minecarts cross. And then you exit the stage at the bottom left. And then here is the last area. This is the temple. This has 30 screens. And at the center is where the, all those fireballs are bouncing around and can pop your balloon. Very, very, very frustrating stage. And again, uh, watch out for those pits that will open up. But you can see where they're about to uh, open up. But that is Pitfall 2, The Lost Caverns, created by Sega, originally in our, an Atari 2600 game. But this is Crazy Climber Racing. Thanks for watching Pitfall 2, uh, created in 1985 by Sega, and this was game number 16. Y'all have a good one, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye, folks.